I beat them by four days by releasing the new record, you know, who it was, what car it was, basically making my Mercedes like irrelevant. Well, getting my E63 back from the insurance auction proved to be quite difficult and was not without its share of calamity along the way. I tried so hard to buy this car back from the insurance, but I'm guessing just because the car is so late model and it was clearly totaled that they probably just didn't want the clean title car floating around. So the insurance told me like I had to go and buy it from the auction. And I had two choices. I could put the car back to stock and get like fair market value for it, or I could leave every single countermeasure and everything in the car and they would give me about 20,000 more. Now, given that I wanted to get the car back and to its former glory, to its full cannonball state, uh, I surely didn't want to put the car back to stock just to put it back to cannonball spec. The car's obviously got a lot of notoriety and if someone sees this thing at auction, you know, someone may want to buy this thing. So. What am I gonna do? So I did my best at disguising the car for what it was. So all of the carbon fiber that I covered up with silver vinyl, pulled all that off. Anything that I could do to make the car like not recognizable, I pulled the side skirts off. But my biggest problem was all the police countermeasures. So to kind of disguise that, the best thing I could come up with was gutting the glove, glove box door that no longer fit over everything and zip tie it to the dashboard and hope that nobody would notice. And if you've ever gone on these insurance auction sites, the way they take the pictures is like, I don't know, they probably have like kids doing it, I don't know, but the pictures are always terrible. So I decide I'm gonna let the car go full cannonball spec and hope that nobody notices. And sure enough, the thing pops up on the IAAI website and the pictures are terrible. Like you can barely read the VIN number and I'm like, man, Thank goodness, like no one's gonna see this car. I'm gonna be able to scoop it up really quick. Now, what ended up happening though, is a few days after that, I got a phone call from a friend of a friend saying, what, you know, what happened to your car? I see it here at the, the auction and he's got pictures of it. And sure enough, somebody took this glove box that we uh, sort of haphazardly put over the countermeasures. That was off. And to make matters worse is IAAI, found out also what car it was. And, and they, they went to social media and uh, kind of put it out there that they now have the you know, 27, 25 Cannonball E63. Now, this was at, at the time that I hadn't released the 2539 time that me and Doug did in the Audi. So, you know, this, this Cannonball thing with the COVID and everything was kind of big news. And I guess they were, you know, obviously trying to get as much as they could from this car that they, you know, paid out the nose for. So after the cat was out of the bag with IAAI, uh, knowing that it was a cannonball car, posting about it, I knew that they're probably gonna reach out to my buddy Alex with Legit Streetcars. He does a lot of content over at their yard, so I kind of like gave him the heads up, and, and sure enough, like two hours after I talked to him, they called him and said, hey, this is the car we got. And uh, you know, Alex did me a favor. I said, you know, we might as well make as much content about you know getting this car back and everything. So uh, you know, he went over there and shot the video, and uh, you know, agreed to not uh, release it uh, at a at a poor time for me, uh, which was nice. But thankfully, their social media presence is not very good, and. Uh, you know, a few people commented, but like really nobody shared it. And it I actually it didn't, it never hit the mainstream. None of the cannonballers noticed. And you know, at this time, I, it's pretty much a secret that this car had been crashed. Uh, everyone just had thought that the, the record had gone to the wayside. They probably just thought I had my car, uh, you know, I don't know. So the, the first auction goes through and nobody bids on it. I win the thing for $17,000. And you know, I'm like, that's about as much as I thought it was really worth, you know, aside from its uh, historical significance, but uh, I had won the car. Now, the thing I didn't understand about the insurance auctions is the insurance company has 24 hours to accept the bid. So I'm, I'm waiting for like final, final word and they come back to me with a counteroffer of $37,000. 
Now, given if this was a stock E63 in perfect condition without a salvage title or anything, that's about what it's worth. So I'm like, you're out of your mind. I'm like, I'll give you 18. And they denied that and they said they're gonna run it again. So this is where I pulled out all the stops. So this before the second time they're gonna run the, the auction, I actually uh, came on, came down here to Atlanta to tell the story about how we went 25-39 in the Audi. So I beat them by four days by releasing the new record, you know, who it was, what car it was, basically making my Mercedes like irrelevant at the time because, you know, who would want it? Now there's a, there's a new record and the car is worthless. So again, I won the car for $17,000. This time they, they, they countered me a little more down to reality, about 22 and a half thousand. And I told them 18,000, like that's all I'm paying. And I guess when these cars keep going through auction over and over again, through these uh, negotiations, as we'll call them with the auto auction, you know, the emotions of realizing that I may not get this car and it may end up in the hands of somebody else. Someone may hold it for ransom and I may end up having to pay way too much for this thing. And uh, you know, I think people who know me realize that if I really want something, like I'll probably pay whatever it takes to get. They accepted my offer and I got the Cannonball E63 back. Now the problem is like, what do I do with this thing? It's hit pretty hard, realistically, is it worth saving? No, if it was any other car, it, you know, it would just end up being parted out, but obviously this is a piece of Cannonball history and I just felt the need to you know, resurrect it. And it you know, even if it just sits in a museum forever, like it needs to be put back together. So now I've got the car back and I'm trying to figure out what to do, uh, looking for parts cars, and in steps Fonzie from Foreign Builds. He reaches out on Instagram, and I hadn't told anybody I'd even gotten the car back, but he's like, hey, did you get the car back? You know, we'd be interested in rebuilding this thing for you. You know, we, we love the story about all that happened to it, and you know, we, over here in California, we rebuild like Lamborghinis and other exotics, and we'd love to rebuild this car for you and uh, you know, preserve the history of this thing. So that st struck up a conversation of uh, you know, how to do that and what that looks like. Uh, he, he said, just bring me your car, bring me a donor car, and we will cut and splice and do whatever it is that they do. And I've learned a lot about uh, this process uh, through doing it now. So uh, I had my guys over at Prime Cuts Chop Shop. I'm a partner with this exotic car auto recycling place in the far, far northwest suburbs of Chicago where we buy wrecked exotic cars and luxury cars and that sort of thing. So I had Brian over there source me a front end hit E63, hit a little bit of an engine fire, hit in the front, perfect donor vehicle uh, for the back end for my E63. So we secured that, sent both cars out to foreign builds and Fozzie and the team kind of took the cars apart. And what, what's really interesting is how they do it. So they actually just drill out spot welds and the car is actually in two sections. So they drill out all these spot welds and they're able to like remove the back half of the car. And actually the car was in really good shape. The floor pans were not touched. I mean, this car is like a tank. I, you know, I, I know that the Germans build a good car, but you know, after seeing this car hit by a semi truck, like I wanna put my wife and kids in a Mercedes after seeing this. So they just drilled out all the spot welds, pulled off the back half of the good car, pulled off the bad, back half of the bad car, and basically just spliced them together. That was like really the easiest part, I think, because as I saw in the pictures, seeing the, he had to peel all the wiring and everything back and just seeing how many wires and stuff we added for all the police countermeasures and the fuse box in the trunk, I mean, He's got his work cut out for him with this like spaghetti nest of wires and and nonsense that I've got in this car. So the car is coming along. The uh, the back half is welded on. The frame is straight. It's now heading over to get painted and kind of uh, start piecing back together. So hopefully in the next uh, month or two, the silver E63, the silver passenger car, as it's uh, has been known, will be back on the road, and uh, we're gonna see what to, what to do with this thing. I don't know if I wanna keep both the S6 and the E63 having two uh, depreciating and aging German super sedans is probably not the wisest thing to do, so uh, we'll have to see what I end up doing with it.